What's up, Sigi here, and welcome to another Tech Here Talk. The iPhone 12 is here with four different models, and that makes it even more challenging than before to pick the right one for you. Now, most people don't upgrade their phone every year, and that's a smart move if a new phone, or for that matter, any product, doesn't provide enough of an increased value for you, why upgrade? Unless, of course, money is not a major concern for you, at which point, shop away. So let's take a closer look at all four models, talk about the similarities and the differences, and figure out which one will work best for you. And we're gonna take a practical approach here. So not just talking about which one is empirically the best, because that would clearly be the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but which features will actually matter to you for how you use your phone. So let's go. First, let's talk about the two categories. We've got iPhone 12, which includes the regular iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini. And then we have the iPhone 12 Pro, which consists of the Pro and Pro Max versions. The 12 and 12 mini are virtually identical in every way except for the size, weight, and battery life. So other than price, the decision is really mostly about which size phone you'd rather have. With the Pro and Pro Max, there are some other differences and we'll get to that later. And since I already mentioned size, let's start out by talking about the size of the phone and the display. Now, I think that's going to immediately eliminate some of the options for a lot of the users, just based on the fact that the phone is either too big or too small. Now all four models have a Super Retina XDR display, which I'll get to in a minute, but the important thing here is that you're not getting a better quality display by buying a more expensive phone. In the iPhone 12 category, the mini has a 5.4 inch display with a resolution of 2440 by 1080. Then the iPhone 12 has a 6.1 inch display with a resolution of 2532 by 1170. Now this small difference in resolution isn't really gonna matter for most people. So it really comes down to which size feels better to you in your hand and which you'd rather carry. I think the best way to do that is to use your current phone as a comparison and make sure that you're looking at the dimensions of the phone, which I'll have on the screen, and not just the display size, because over the years, the bezels have gotten smaller, so we're able to use larger display sizes, but with smaller form factors. When looking at the Pro, we're getting the same size and resolution display as the iPhone 12, 6.1 inch, and 2532 by 1170. And on the Pro Max model, we're making the jump to 6.7 inch display, with a 2778 by 1284. And again, use your current phone as a gauge, and that might lead you to decide that the Pro Max is too big, it won't be comfortable to use, or maybe it just won't fit comfortably in your pocket. Or on the other hand, you may think that because you use your phone as your main device, it's easier to use a larger device like the Pro Max, and then things like multitasking, again, will be easier because you have more screen real estate. Now, I touched a bit on the display itself. Again, it's a Super Retina XDR with Apple's True Tone feature, so it's able to use sensors to identify the ambient lighting and then adjust the colors on the phone so white always appears to be white. It's also a DCI-P3 HDR display with support for HDR10 and Dolby Vision. So it's gonna be able to show you more variations of each color for more accurate images and video. Now finally, all four displays have a two million to one contrast ratio and a peak brightness of 1200 nits. So we're getting excellent contrast and really deep blacks to make those images really pop. There is a very slight difference in pixels per inch between the four models. So on the mini, we're getting 476. The 12 and the Pro are 460, and the Pro Max is 458, which is technically the lowest. But these numbers are beyond your ability to distinguish, and I wouldn't let this be a deciding factor. Now next, I wanna talk about the cameras because I know that's a major consideration for a lot of users. Now I'm a huge camera nerd myself, so I'll include a few technical details, but I'm going to approach this from the perspective of the average user, and we'll leave the nerdier details to my iPhone 12 camera review. Okay, so all four models have the same front-facing camera. So when you're doing things like video calls or taking selfies, you're gonna get the same performance from all four phones. With the rear-facing camera, Apple went with two different camera systems, one for the 12 and 12 mini, and then another one for the Pro and Pro Max, and there are actually some differences between those two as well. The 12 and the 12 mini have a two camera system comprised of wide and ultra wide cameras. Both are 12 megapixel cameras and the ultra wide camera has a maximum aperture of f2.4 and the wide has a maximum aperture of f1.6 
which will let in a lot more light onto the sensor and that's going to improve performance in low light, which is really important. The Pro and Pro Max have a three camera system where again we see an ultra wide with a max aperture of f2.4 and a wide with a max aperture of f1.6. But in addition to those two cameras, we get a different telephoto camera with each model. The Pro has a 12 megapixel camera with a 52 millimeter f2.0 lens, which will allow you to zoom in more and will work great for portraits. It also gives the Pro a 4x zoom when you're moving from ultra wide to telephoto. Now the Pro Max has the best imaging system of all four models with a 12 megapixel camera that uses a 65 millimeter f2 telephoto lens. So we're getting even more zoom, bringing the optical zoom range up to 5x. Now optical zoom is the one that doesn't degrade the image quality, whereas digital zoom, which all four phones have, is where you can start seeing the image getting worse and worse as you zoom in. And the Pro Max also uses sensor shift stabilization on a telephoto lens. So instead of the elements of the lens trying to compensate for camera movement, the actual sensor is able to move around and essentially try to offset the movement of the phone and get more stable results. Now, in addition to the three cameras, the Pro and Pro Max also have a LiDAR scanner, which sends out rays of light and then measures how quickly they reflect back. And this essentially lets it create a 3D model or a depth map of the scene, which has a few advantages. First, it can be used for a wide variety of AR because it's able to produce more accurate representations of the 3D world environment. Now, in terms of the camera system, the LiDAR scanner helps it focus in low light because it can measure how far a subject is from the camera. And this is really important because it's an extremely challenging process for the sensor to do on its own when there isn't enough light. And it's part of the reason why you may see your phone struggle to quickly get focus when it's dark. I also wanna to touch on a couple of video features, which again, I'll discuss in more detail in my camera review. All four models are able to shoot video in 4K at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. 24 frames per second is the most cinematic look, and then 60 frames per second is very sharp and lifelike. And they're also able to shoot in 1080p, which is a lower resolution and uses a lot less storage at either 30 or 60 frames per second. Now, if you're looking to do slow motion, again, the good news is that all four models can do slow-mo at 1080p in 120 frames per second and even 240 frames per second, which really lets you slow things down. Now, one subtle difference has to do with HDR video recording with Dolby Vision. And there we see the 12 and the mini can only go up to 4K 30 and the Pro and Pro Max can go all the way up to 4K 60. This is an advantage for the two Pro models, but not one that I think will actually matter to most users. Just being able to shoot, edit, and share using Dolby Vision, all with just an iPhone, is pretty amazing to a camera nerd like me. Like the sheer processing power that's required to analyze each frame and then optimize the exposure and dynamic range on the fly in 4K 30 is amazing, and then let alone 4K 60. But the distribution options of this footage are fairly limited right now, so I don't see this being a practical feature for the majority of casual users. All right, so where does this leave us? If you want the basic camera system, the 12 and 12 mini are the same, and then you're back to choosing based on the phone size and the price. If you're looking for just the best camera system, then your only option is to go with the Pro Max because it's the only one that gives you the 65 millimeter telephoto lens with sensor shift stabilization. And if you want most of the features of the best camera system, but without going all the way to the largest and most expensive device, then the Pro is the right fit for you. Now, before I move on to the next section, if you like what you've seen so far and have gotten value from this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest gear and tutorials. All right, so moving on, since we were talking about cameras and aesthetics, let's talk about the color options. And I know that I'm going to put a case on my phone, which always bugs me because it hides the color, but otherwise the phone would be broken within a week. But I can still see some of the color depending on which case I'm using. And then I know that some of you don't use a case at all, I don't know how you do it, you bunch of rebels. So the 12 and the 12 mini are available in a deep sort of like navy blue and then a mint toothpaste green and a dark red. That's not like candy apple red, it's a little darker than that. And then it's available in white and black. 
Now the Pro and Pro Max come in Pacific Blue, which is I think the one that I'm gonna be getting, silver, and then gold and graphite. Now all four colors of the Pro look awesome. And it's really up to what you feel looks the best. But if you're trying to match an existing stainless steel Apple Watch, then the graphite and the gold should match it perfectly. Okay, so next let's talk about battery life. And depending on how you look at it, your opinion of whether this is a big difference will vary. With the iPhone mini, we're looking at up to 15 hours of video playback, 17 with the iPhone 12 and the Pro, and then 20 with the Pro Max. So technically, the Pro Max has 33% longer battery life, even though it's driving a larger display. But whether this difference is a deciding factor is completely up to you. We're still using a lightning port, I'm not really sure why, but all four devices can be charged to 50% in 30 minutes using a 20 watt or higher adapter. And just in case you don't already know, Apple is no longer including an adapter, so you'll need to purchase one separately if you don't already have one. You also have the option of using the new MagSafe, which is an advanced new system that Apple claims will improve the wireless charging experience. Using a wound wire coil, which now accommodates magnets, the system will automatically align the charger with the phone for improved efficiency. On top of that, the eShield has been improved to safely provide up to 15 watts of wireless charging, which I think is twice as much as we were getting before. Now next I'm gonna talk about the performance, but only to say that all four devices are powered by the same new A14 Bionic chip. It's the fastest chip ever used in any smartphone and it's built on five nanometer process technology. Now very quickly, the reduction in transistor size allowed Apple to increase performance and add features while at the same time improving energy efficiency. We're looking at a performance increase of 40% over the A13 chip, a six core CPU, which Apple says is 50% faster than any chip used on any other smartphone, and a four core GPU, which again delivers up to 50% faster graphics. And I think that's enough about performance, especially because this video is about how to choose between the different devices and all four phones have the same level of performance. Now moving on, if you remember when we talked about the color options, I said I was gonna be using a case, but as far as the built-in protection, all four devices have an IP68 rating. This means complete protection against contact with dust, and all four phones can be submerged to a maximum depth of six meters, which is about 20 feet, for about 30 minutes. What's great here is that Apple is offering the same level of device protection at every model and price point. So you don't need to spend more money to get a better protected device. And this isn't something that has always been true with Apple. Now, regardless of the rating, personally, if I take a phone with me when we go snorkeling, I always use a waterproof case just to be sure. All four models get the new ceramic shield, which Apple says is tougher than any smartphone glass. And at the same time, it's four times more resistant to cracking due to a drop. And I'm really excited about this because these two types of protections usually present a case where you have to choose one or the other. And I like the fact that we're getting both here. And trust me, I'm the perfect person to test this glass because I dropped my phone way more than anyone should. Now moving on to wireless connectivity, all four phones use the newer and faster Wi-Fi 6, all of them use Bluetooth 5.0, and all of them are 5G capable. I'm not gonna spend too much time on 5G in this video because again, I'm trying to help you choose and this isn't a differentiator. Okay, so next let's talk about the pricing and the storage options, and this is done by category. So the 12 and the 12 mini are offered in 64, 128 and 256 gig model. And then the Pro and Pro Max are available in 128, 256 and 512. And I'll put the pricing for all four models right below so I don't have to go through it one by one and repeat all these numbers. But let's take a moment to discuss how much storage you actually need. And that really depends on what type of user you are. If you're essentially using your phone just to make calls, text, consume streamable video content like YouTube or Netflix or Amazon Prime, and then stream audio content like Pandora or Spotify, then one of the lower capacity options could probably work for you. But if you're someone who likes to take a lot of pictures, shoot a lot of video, especially at a higher frame rate 4K video, and if you like to download movies to your phone for offline viewing, then you should start looking at the mid or high tiered storage options. And remember that you have the ability to offload images and video to either the cloud 
or locally to your computer and then free up some space on your device if you're ever in a bind. All right, so we looked at all four models. Let's see if we can break it down a bit. If we're looking at the iPhone 12 category, then it essentially comes down to size and price. You're getting the same features and you need to pick the one that will be most comfortable for you to use and fits within your budget. Now, obviously, if you want the cheapest model, you can get the iPhone 12 mini, which starts at $699. But if you want the larger display, then you're looking at the 12 for an additional 100 bucks. Now, if you're looking at the pro models, then it's a little bit more difficult to choose because if you want the best camera system, you also have to get the larger size and the more expensive model. So you need to balance budget, size preference, and camera system performance to choose what will work best for you. I really wish that there was a pro size model with the Pro Max camera system, and I would even pay the same price for it because I prefer the 6.1 inch display form factor. I'll put links in the description to where you can buy the iPhone 12 as well as some of my favorite accessories. And if you buy anything at all using those links, you help support my channel for free and help me create more content for you. So thank you in advance. I really hope that I was able to give you a helpful breakdown of all four iPhone 12 models. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.